Coming up on Family Futures today. I was raised where the, the woman did everything. Mm -hmm. So she pretty much managed the household. So uh, for me, that was the right way to do things. So when I met Danielle, all she did was jump in my mother's shoes. Mm. From your perspective, what did that even mean? I have no idea. So what I did was continue to talk to him about it. So in other words, like I gotta get in order and I gotta get in alignment. Right. But yeah. I, I don't even know how to do that because I can't even define it. I don't even know what it looks like. Correct. I have no idea, Lord, what are you asking me to do? I hear all the time you're supposed to be submissive unto Jesus, but what does that mean? My mother used to call me hard-hearted Hannah. Okay. Because I didn't really cry and yes. stuff like that. So yes. she would say, oh, you're hard-hearted Hannah. And I don't, she didn't mean no ill intent. Yes. But because that was the word spoken, then when issues would come up and I want to cry about it or talk about it, I say, I'm hard-hearted Hannah, I can't cry. Everybody has problems. Mm -hmm. Right. But you got to really figure out what is it that I know that God has called me oh, to do. Right. And then stay in that lane. Today we're going to speak with Danielle and Antoine Walker. These guys have been married 20 years and now what they're going to do, they're going to share their story and tell us what they've gone through and what they've done so that they can thrive today. We are really looking forward to this conversation. Man, thank you guys so much for coming over and spending the day with mm -hmm. us. Look, let me tell you a little bit about ourselves. I know we've already talked before. I just want to reiterate, just go over a little bit more about ourselves. So my good thing right here in the cold, we've been married 27 years. Yes. And what we've done, we've, we started an organization, Empower to Engage, because a lot of people have asked us to do this. They said, we like what you guys have, we like the way you raised your children, now you mm -hmm. need to share it with the world. Mm -hmm. So through Empower to Engage, we've written some books. We call it the Done Right series. Marriage Done Right is hard work, but it's worth it. And that book is about putting the fun, fine focus back into your marriage, because mm -hmm. in and we believe in all three of those elements, the fun, the fire, and we the focus, kind of focusing on that. Parenting done right is hard work, but it's worth it. And that's a book about winning the battle for your children. And then what we consider to be even our most important work, because if you're going to have a good marriage and be a good parent, uh, you got to be able to take care of yourself and, and be the kind of person that you really have been created to be. And that's leadership done right is hard work, but it's worth it. And you notice, and we focus on the fact that it's hard work. Cause I have that word, you know, hard is hard work is like a cuss word to a lot of people, <laughs> but we don't want to let them know that, you know, it is worth it because you can do that. But in addition to that, we do coaching for couples and families. And then we also help people via this format and people like you actually help us help people via this format. So thank you so much for coming and, and like I said, spending the day with us. Yes. Uh, thanks for having yes, us. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having us here today. Yeah. And with that being said, why don't you go ahead and just tell the world a little bit about you guys. Well, I'm Antoine Walker, and this is uh, my my wife, uh, Danielle Walker, of uh, 20 years. You used to play for the oh, Heat, man? No. No, <laughs> no basketball skills at all. <laughs> no. None, none whatsoever. Uh -huh. uh, we've been, like I said, been married for 20 years, and we've been together for 28 years, and we met when we were 18 years old. Yeah. Um, and we've been ever, together ever since and been inseparable ever, uh, ever since. So, Literally. <laughs> well, so what happened? You were 18. Did you see her somewhere? Give us some of that. So the funny part about it is that technically when I first saw her, we were 17. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> and we tried to communicate and get together. And uh, I was calling her and she, she said she would call me back. Oh, how'd you get a number? I mean, a, a, a friend of mine gave her. So we knew mutual friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine gave it to me and I would call her and had you seen her yet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, when, when, when I first saw her, uh, she was standing in her driveway. She had on, uh, sh she did a cheerleading or palms for, because uh, she went to Winnie Young. So mm -hmm. she had on the short shorts. And I first saw her, I said, and I'm looking at the car window. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm talking to my friend. I said, I'm going to marry her. And, uh, and I left it at that. So he gave me her number and I called her. Oh, I mean, what do you, what do you like about it? You like the uniform, like her legs? I mean, what was it? She said she had like the whole short shorts. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, Let him right. Tell story. Man, I just wanted the brother to tell Go us what was going on through his head. <laughs> I like the, the the whole picture. So we, you know, I gave her a call. So some time went by and I gave her a call and uh, she didn't call me back. And Go ahead. So wait, this is how. I, so he called me and I had company 
And I said, I will call you back. Okay. Well, he called me back five times within the time period before I could call him back. There was a reason back. for that, though. Yeah. There was I a said, reason for calling her. Like, there was a reason for calling done. her five times. <laughs> Okay. I thought he was a stalker. <laughs> At a young age. Yeah, I'm like, no, there's something wrong with this boy. Like, no. We're done. I'm what was the reason? I'm persistent. But okay. the main reason uh -huh. was is that, uh, you know, I was raised by my grandparents. And at the 10 o'clock, we couldn't have phone calls. Oh. And I didn't think she, I wanted to make sure that she wasn't these type of girls that would call after 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Because if she did, the whole entire house woke up. And my grandma answered the phone. She might hear some choice words. Oh. So if you say you're going to call me back, I'm just trying to figure out you keep saying that but you're not doing it mm -hmm. so i'm i'm saying to myself okay you go call me back call me back so she never called back and you him that phone call <laughs> <laughs> like, like, call me back like call me back at least maybe 10 minutes before then uh -huh. and right. say hey just so you know i'll talk to you tomorrow because it's getting late at least one other call could have been right but no. five i don't know that made sense to you yeah that yeah, made sense to me I look if you're gonna call me back call me back before 10 otherwise i'll talk to you tomorrow right just say that that didn't even cross your mind no you? no no all you knew is that she wasn't keeping her word well i knew that I wanted her. So, <laughs> so when she said she had company, that didn't register in my brain. Whoever's over there is irrelevant at this right. point. They need to tell him that I'm coming in. So, uh, okay. uh, she, didn't, she, she didn't call me back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I so, threw the number away. Let's just yeah, be real. It's like he's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. You threw the number away? Mm -hmm. You didn't know that. <laughs> okay, that was good. Okay. Uh, so, a year went by. Mm -hmm. you, you were crazy, man. Don't you realize that? I don't think I was crazy. Not even today. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was persistent. 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 Okay, okay. I was persistent. Okay, okay. So a year went by, mm -hmm. and then another friend of mine who grew up on my block went to her school. And uh, we were standing outside talking. He said... Well, wait, I got to jump in first because it started because cause we went to school together, me and the other friend. Okay. And just in <clears throat> class and just making small talk, I just said, how is Antoine? Just See, because I right know that there. was the... So I'm on her mind. Mm -hmm. So she missed for a whole year. Oh, because those, those five C's you playing. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. See, okay. it was a plan of that. Uh -huh. Right, right. Just right. let me do me. I'm just going to That's why you sitting here, right? That's why you sitting here. <laughs> that, that, that is a fact. That is a fact. She is right here, right She's now. With him. With you. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So I said, How's the Antoine? Right. And the words out of his mouth says, He wants to take you to prom. Not, not right, I'm looking like that. Mm -hmm. Like that makes no sense. <laughs> I have not talked or heard from him in a year. Now he wants to take me to prime. So we're just going back and oh, forth. Oh, like, oh, right. I, got it. I got it. Why are you asking about? Because that because that was the only mutual thing we had in common. I was just making small talk, so I was just trying to find something to connect with him on. That's, okay. what, that's, that's what she that thought. Right. And I really sense. did not. But that's what she thought. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just small talk. But go ahead. Right. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Tell go your go version. Tell you. Right. right. <laughs> So we just went back and forth, me and the friend. And I'm like, oh, he's not going to call. He said, I'm going to make sure he calls you. And so we just kind of back and forth, tit for tat. And mm -hmm. so he didn't call that night. You knew he was going to call. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but so now the friend comes to Antoine mm -hmm. and says, whatever, now you can pick that up. So he came to me. We were standing outside talking. And he said, uh, Danielle want to take you to prom. And I said, who is Danielle? Because I knew he could be talking about this Danielle. The one with the, the cheerleader outfit. Right. Uh -huh. the, the one that didn't call oh, me back. Bad. At this point, uh -huh. you out of my mind. I didn't move on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, he said, man, just give her a call. She won't take you to prom. Man, I'm not going to call her. So a day went by. I didn't call her. Because remember, I called her a year before. Right. Mm -hmm. And she didn't call her We're not going through back. this again. So mm -hmm. uh, I didn't call well, her. We're we not going through this again mm -hmm. until tomorrow. <laughs> 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 so... So then, so a couple of days went by, and we were talking on talking the block again. He was like, man, Danielle, well, no, didn't you say that? Yeah, it was just like you said, back yeah. and forth. But anyway, so the next day, he did wind up calling. <laughs> yep. No, but what did you tell? You told him, said, see? I told you he wasn't going to call. And see? then I guess the friend got persistent, like, you're not going to make no, me look tell, No, tell the whole story. Uh -oh. Say it again. What happened? Oh, I said, see, I knew he wasn't going to call. She was looking for my call. Uh-oh. See, y'all not asking these questions. She was looking for my call. <laughs> Well, go ahead. I really was not consciously. Yeah. I was just saying, see, I told you so, because that was the one thing we were being right. turned about. So. I told you so right. that he wasn't going to call. Why would you bring me up again if you're not thinking about me? Okay. She was thinking about you. That's why she's here. That's okay. Why she's here. So let, let's 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 go. So mm -hmm. eventually I did call her. And I uh you know, I called her, dialed a number. And I told my friend, I said, look, I'm gonna call her, but this is you know, I don't have time for no games. This is it. Coming up on Family Futures Today. I was raised 
where the, the woman did everything. Mm -hmm. So she pretty much managed the household. So uh, for me, that was the right way to do things. So when I met Danielle, all she did was jump in my mother's shoes. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what did that even mean? I have no idea. So what I did was continue to talk to him about it. So in other words, like I gotta get in order and I gotta get in the line. Right. But yeah. I, I don't even know how to do that because I can't even define it. I don't even know what it looks like. Correct. I have no idea, Lord, what are you asking me to do? I hear all the time you're supposed to be submissive unto Jesus, but what does that mean? Are you ready to make monumental changes in your life, business, or relationship and are looking for a push in the right direction? Tony and Nicole Davis from the brand new TV show Family Futures Today offer personal development and relationship coaching services so that you can get your life and your relationships on a path to success. After nearly three decades of marriage, Tony and Nicole know what it takes to have a dynamic marriage and be inspiring parents without giving up on personal goals and dreams. As co-founders of Empowered to Engage, they've released the Done Right book series on leadership, marriage, and parenting, and travel across the United States, helping people just like you. And now, they're expanding to help individuals, couples, and families around the globe. For more information and to sign up for your free consultation, visit www.empoweredtoengage.com. Hi, this is Wendy, and welcome to The Wendy Life. This is a brand new show. We are celebrating some unsung champions in our community, the disabled community. I have been a mom of disabled children for 21 years, and I look to bring light to this community. We are going to talk to you and celebrate therapists, teachers, doctors in this community. We are going to talk to the special needs community themselves, people who are rocking out this life despite their disability, showing us how to live our best lives no matter what life throws at us. You can find us on the Ultimate Faith TV Network, which is on your Roku streaming box, or Road to Eternity on YouTube. That's Road, the number two, and Eternity. The Wendy Life. New episodes every second and fourth Friday on the Road to Eternity channel. Like you, my family is always looking for great movies and TV shows to enjoy together. So you can only imagine how excited I was when we decided to create our very own media ministry, Road to Eternity. We believe in creating entertainment that edifies the soul by developing stories that incorporate faith and hope in people's lives. So whether you're watching a movie or even a television show, we desire to bring you closer to Jesus Christ by releasing entertainment that your family and friends can enjoy. From our family to yours, we thank you for joining us as we take you on this new and exciting journey. I'm a big guy here, Father. And I, uh, you know, I called her, dialed a number. And I told my friend, I said, look, I'm going to call her, but this is, you know, I don't have time for no games. This is it. So I picked up the phone. I said, uh, his name was Torian, but for short, we call him Toddy. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, this is Antoine. This is uh, Toddy's friend. And then we just started talking, and here we are. Yeah. And oh we, we've goodness. never been separated. So did you know, because he knew you were the one even when he hadn't received when, your when, phone call. When he saw her in the driveway with That's the chili right. outfit. When did you know? So I was never on the dating scene. Okay. Um, even through high school and things like that. And so Why? that just wasn't me. It, it, and it's not like I didn't like a person here or there, but it just wasn't me to be dating people. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I mean... I would just say God just literally set me apart. I don't know how else to explain it. Because Were you like I serious just, about your work? Were you shy? Were you just shy? not interested in doing it? I really just, <clears throat> I don't know. You just, I, just, you just exist and just going through the experience. It did. Yeah. Like I did. You know, I enjoyed my high school life and things like that. And so I really just didn't have any particular person. But I was prayerful mm -hmm. about Lord. Um, I guess I was prayerful for a husband. Not, not so intensely. I know. 
that's just it. I wasn't uh-huh. necessarily praying for a husband at that time. I mean, I guess I was looking for a companion. Okay. But I don't think I was praying to God, give me a boyfriend. It was more like, give me somebody serious or who, you know, you would have in place for me. And that wasn't like spoken to me or coached on uh-huh. how to do it. It was just something I did. So you, so you were already like, if, if a boy is going to come in, because you know, you want to talk to man at 17. Right. If, if a boy coming into my life, he better be about some. He better be serious. Yeah. You, and that was your mindset already. It was. Uh-huh. And so I was prayerful about that. Mm-hmm. And so I literally just let God lead that. And so I knew that I knew that Antoine was the one. At what point? How? Probably when it came back around. I mean that second phone. Yeah. I mean that, I'm sorry, that sixth phone call. Right. <laughs> By sixth then. phone call. Persistence. Because uh-huh. Because how God did orchestrate that, that came out of my mouth. How's yeah. Antoine? Yeah. Right. And so yeah. God initiated that. And here we are. Yes. But when Antoine called me, it literally was like, hello. And we just continued the conversation like it never had existed the previous experience. Right. It was so fluid. And we just instantly. And I just knew that I knew God was saying that, that we were doing. He was the one. And since then, now, so, what has been happening? You got 20 years under your belt. Just. What has that been like? Walk us through the good, the not so good, mm-hmm. and then even not so gooder. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what What's been good? What's been good? Well, for us, I would say the overall, <laughs> right, our overall marriage, we would have said was good. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Especially mm-hmm. from just taking a look at a glance. You know yes. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, even even just getting to know us and things like that, it was like, yeah, we we, we thought we really had a good foundation. Mm-hmm. We come from good parents yes. and yeah, just good upbringing. Mm-hmm. But we didn't know it wasn't good. How about that? Okay. Until about 17 years into our marriage. And the reason why that was the case is because the Lord brought to our attention Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it wasn't good. Like mm-hmm. we needed to make some changes and we needed mm-hmm. to do that in order for the fullness of what he had for us mm-hmm. to manifest. So we met at 18. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it's necessary to say that my parents got divorced oh. after 30 years, almost 30 years of marriage. Okay. They got divorced. And so I would say it was around my that. My grandparents separated. Mm-hmm. The ones that raised you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a foundation of, you know what I'm saying? Brokenness mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't, we didn't have a good example of what it looked like to really walk out of marriage and mm-hmm. be in a good relationship. So we just brought in our experience and then just started to just live life. Because we grew up together, we never had that opportunity to grow into our own. Okay. So we just grew up like together. Mm-hmm. So we were always one in that sense. So I never really found out who I was. Mm-hmm. Antoine didn't really get a chance to find out who he was as a man or me as a woman. Mm-hmm. We literally just grew up together. And then by the time you're 26, 28, 30 plus, now you like identify like, what is it to even be a woman? What is it even be a man? And mm-hmm. so those things started to surface. I grew up seeing situations in my household that I didn't want to be subjected to as a woman, mm-hmm. as far as like just being wanting to be secure financially and things like that. So I always took the position that, oh, I'm gonna make sure that I make enough money, that I'm gonna be the one that will control the scenario so that if I'm ever in a situation I need to leave, I'm gonna be comfortable with leaving and not have to be worried about the financial situation. Mm-hmm. I can't go because of blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I was raised where the, the woman did everything. Mm-hmm. So she pretty much managed the household. So uh, for me, that was the right way to do things. So when I met Danielle, all she did was jump in my mother's shoes. Mm. So, you know, and I used to hear those things growing up. And, you you know, you watch TV shows and people and, you know, they're talking to marriage specialists and experts and they talking about you marriage your mother. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Marrying marry your mother. Yeah, I married my mother. Mm. I wanted, I mean, it was cookie cutter to the mm. point. So I was like, oh, this is how I was raised. It was great for me. She's doing the exact same thing now. I feel good about that. The problem was between then and now is that now I'm becoming into a man. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, like Danielle said, I start my own identity Mm -hmm. and she's blocking that as if she's my mother. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, when you're little, your mom kind of guides you, Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm a man. You're trying to guide me. I don't need your guidance now, not realizing what has already been set up. Right. Right. So now I'm in it now. Right. So how do I get her to become a wife and how do I become a husband? 
you know, we'd like to have a little something to eat, but I'd like to just spend some time with you if you could help me out and you guys can go do whatever it is that y'all do and we can come back together over a little something to eat. How's that sound? That sounds sounds great. Like a plan. Okay, good. All right. Absolutely. All right, cool. I think one of the things that I would like to uh, just share with the men, uh, you know, God has taken me on a journey and he has allowed me to uh, understand how he operates. Cause I grew up not understanding what that means and what that looks like. And he has allowed me to not only be successful in my workplace, but also allow him to come into the workplace to make the workplace successful. Before it was just me doing all the work, working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, spending less time with my family, not spending time with my daughters, or not spending quality time with my wife. Well, Antoine, I just want to get you down here. We actually, they kicked us out upstairs, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. So, so here we are. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for coming down here. But man, I'm going to tell you, I'm really inspired by your metamorphosis, mm -hmm. you know, from where you were and where you are and where you're trying to go. Did you understand, because I know you used the word um, in order mm -hmm. and you said alignment. From your perspective, what did that even mean? I have no idea. So what I did was continue to talk to him about it. So in other words, like I got to get in order and I got to get in alignment. Right. But yeah. I, I don't even know how to do that because I can't even define it. I don't even know what it looks like. Correct. I have no idea. Lord, what are you asking me to do? I hear all the time you're supposed to be submissive in Jesus. But what does that mean? Uh -huh. What does that look like? How do you do that? And I'm going through some stuff. So what did it look like to you? Okay, <laughs> walk me through. <laughs> right. So I continue this conversation. I said, okay, Lord. And I'm, I'm like, I'm starting to see his hand talking to him. Things are happening. What you saying to him? I'm like, Lord, you, you. You're showing me you're, you're possible, but again, we don't have any work. So this is where it all changed. Mm -hmm. So me and Danielle go to the store. She wants to go to the, uh, the grocery store, and I drop her off. And I'm sitting in the car waiting for her to come back. And then Lois said, I want you to go to rehab. I said, rehab? What do you? I, I don't drink. I'm not on drugs. What are you talking about? He was referring work rehab. Mm -hmm. Prior to me losing my job, who does all the work? Me. Mm -hmm. I said, work rehab? I said, Okay, Danielle gets in the car. I said, look, the Lord put on my heart that I need to go to work rehab. So we need to go home and start, I want to start looking for jobs. But keep in mind, I don't want to go back to corporate mm -hmm. because of what happened. So make a long story short, I'm on the computer looking, trying to be obedient, mm -hmm. right? Looking for jobs. I get a job. I get an interview. They don't call me. They said, well, we're going to look elsewhere. I said, okay, Lord, well, I'm being obedient. They finally called three months later. Mm -hmm. They call the job is not enough to pay the mortgage. And I'm saying to myself, God, why would you put me in a job that I still can't pay my mortgage? What is what are you trying? So I'm talking to him like I'm talking to you. What is going on? Please help me understand what you're trying to get me to see so I can do it. So I, I, at this point, are you still angry or you or now you just not really that? angry because okay. I, I can't pay the mortgage. So mm -hmm. I don't understand. Every situation, you refinance the house. That's God. You refinance the house, ref, refinance the house again twice. That's God. Both of us don't have no job. You tell me to go to work rehab. I don't want to go back to corporate. You put me back in the corporate job that I still can't pay the mortgage. What are you doing? What is going on? So I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm calling my friends, fussing and cussing. This is ridiculous. I got you guys jobs and y'all not taking care of me and all that stuff and things of that nature. So are you I, losing friends in the process? Not necessarily. They just okay. said, Antoine, nobody's hiring. Okay, we, okay. We, we can't do anything about it. You know, we, we want to help you, but my company's not hiring. Okay, okay. So I'm mad and angry at God and and and, and stuff like that. And then I, I got home that night and me and God had like a, I forgot what Bible uh, verse this was when uh, somebody wrestled with God and he mm -hmm. kind of broke him down. Mm -hmm, Jacob. So we, we, we kind of got into a, what I would call a tussle mm -hmm. and and where well, I just got on my knees and said, Lord, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I can't do it no more. We can't pay our bills. It is all up to you. Mm -hmm. The next day I went to work. Everything for me changed. I went in playing spiritual music at my store. Mm -hmm. I started praying. I went with the attitude that thank you, God, for this job. Thank you, God, for, this, for, for, for putting me here. I know you're going to have me for, here for a reason. So my whole attitude changed on why I was here. Mm -hmm. So I'm now that pride is starting to move away. What he was so showing, you went from anger to thankful. Correct. Uh -huh. What he was showing me is that 
your pride all these years have been in the way of me trying to bless you. Mm -hmm. And he reminded me, what was the number one thing that I cast Satan out of hell for? Pride. So he was showing me that you have to be in alignment in order for me to move your family forward and provide. I want to provide all your provisions. Okay. So and at that point, so you struggle with the definition of alignment. Yes. And now you you said, he said, I had to be in a, you have to be in alignment. Mm -hmm. What did alignment mean to you at that particular point in time? Jesus, Antoine, my wife in that order. Okay. And the order before was? Jesus, Danielle, Antoine was somewhere in that number. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that number. So, Again, it was Antoine doing his own thing that I'm going to go out here and make it happen myself and work. Mm -hmm. uh, and when that happened, three months later, when I started to change my attitude and started to trust in him, three months later, another company called, and here we are now. Uh, and he put me in a position where my mortgage can get paid. But here's the key, and this is most important, especially for me. Ever since then, I never looked at a job ever the same. So my attitude when I go to work now, I thank God every single day. And when my boss asked me, why are you so successful? I said, it's because of God. And mm -hmm. I give him all the praise. And my work, people at work know me. They always say that I'm spiritual because every time I'm in a meeting and they're saying, man, you, your, your store is doing really good. I said, well, first I'm going to give credit to God. Mm -hmm. And people are trying to find out, well, how, how you like to do that in corporate? How does corporate allow you to do that? Well, why wouldn't I do it? Mm-hmm. Where there's no law. I don't preach to anybody, but there's no law. There's no rule where I can't give thanks to who I know is providing my provision. Mm -hmm. No. And earlier, up, earlier when we were upstairs with the ladies, you said I'm a hard worker. Yes. And now you give it. Are you still a hard worker? No. I actually work less now and make more money than I did when I was working hard. So how did you define working hard? 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Oh, so so for you, hard work was all it all equated to hours. Correct. Okay. Because in retail, I'm a store manager. In retail, you feel the longer you're there, the more productivity you get. Okay. Right? So not knowing that I'm missing out on my family and family time and missing out on birthdays and things of that nature, but I feel I have to be there to make sure the job gets done. Okay. Now I just put in my 40 hours that's required and I'm going about my business. Is now the job still getting done? Yes. Now things do happen. You know, they have promotions and things of that nature where we have to open up early. But beyond that, I just do what I'm supposed to do. Every morning I get up and say, okay, Lord, let it be all of you and none of me. And I want to thank you for making my store successful. And I go to work. Okay. So and now you talked about alignment. Now mm -hmm. talk about how that, that shift in attitude has impacted the house. Well, now it's impacted the house because now I'm the head of the home. Uh, so now I'm- Why well, weren't you the head before? Because my wife took on that role. My upbringing, uh, the, the women ran the house. Mm -hmm. So because of my upbringing, I just thought that was the right way to do it. So when I married Danielle, she just automatically assumed that role and we were fine with it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it wasn't until later. When you say ran the house, what did that, what did that mean? Of how God changed our life. So we mm -hmm. opened the whole door up. So it's not like nothing scripted. Mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, it is, this is what happened. This is what could happen. This is what needs to happen. And we've seen so many people who are just able to say, man, I didn't. I thought I was the only person going through that. Or, mm -hmm. And so we're trying to prevent that day, and that will come for some people that I want to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's so, good. That's good. That's and, very and, important. As well. Right, right, and because that's the road that we were heading down. Okay, good. So I tell you what, I want to hear more about that. But let's get back with the ladies, and with okay. I want to hear it from Danielle's perspective as well. That's Absolutely. what the, we are. The walkers. We said, we are the walkers, we're walking with the walkers. What is right. it? We are walkers united. We are walkers united. Let's yeah. talk about that. Okay. That's good. All right. Thank let's, you. Let's get back up with the ladies. All right. What's really important as women is to understand when it started off with me, God said, Danielle, I know that you love your family and you desire that they all come into union and that you walk this out. But what about you? And I said, whoa, that was a, that was a huge moment. Because especially us as women and moms, we have that nurturing aspect that makes it about everybody else but us. But God said, what about you? And when he just drove that in and kept driving that point, what about you, what about you, what about you? It helped me to start recognizing that I am valuable. I am a daughter of the Most High. 
God desires that I have purpose and live as he created me. And it's not to be captured in the lives of everybody else, which is what happens when we're taking care of the family and taking care of the kids and the husbands and the dog and the cat and running back and forth to you know, practices. God said, but what about you? I've purposed you, I've gifted you. There's so much more to you and I desire you grow into the fullness of who I've called you into being. Daniel, this has been quite a journey, huh? Yes. And you have learned some amazing things. The spiritual aspect yes. has really been developed through this process. Mm -hmm. So how has it changed your marriage? Mm. The peace. Mm. I mentioned earlier that it was so much tension yes. and just underlying. Yes. Not being able to understand where it was coming from mm -hmm. and more importantly, how to fix it. Yes. And so now we do just have such amazing peace. And what makes it so nice is it's not about he has the right answer. I have the right answer mm -hmm. being right or wrong, trying mm -hmm. to prove the other. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know what, what is God saying about it? Because then we know when we in this perfect will that it's, it's going to manifest. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. And so learning how to keep God as the center. And so he may have an idea and I have an idea, both different. Mm -hmm. Then we say, well, what does God say about it? And then when we, Find out what that is. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Done. So it wasn't about, oh, see, I told you you were wrong and I was right. 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 It right. just makes right. it so right. much easier to communicate. Right. And to move forward. So I'm making decisions and stuff mm. now. So what what is happening? How is that working? The whole submission, because you were strong. Mm -hmm. The whole changing as God was trying to create you to be more of a wife and not a commander. Yes. What has that been like? So... It's been a beautiful thing mm -hmm. to to just, first of all, understand who I was even as a woman. Yes. Because we were together at 18, yes. I was still a kid. So not ever being able to identify with just what is a woman. And God had to bring that to light. God told you who you were. Yes. Yeah. And But what was so interesting <laughs> is he first had to release the baby girl that was trapped inside who was struggling and never got quite... Um, settled in the dysfunction and things like that. Like there was a baby girl in there that mm -hmm. was hurting. Mm -hmm. And that's what God had to work on is who is this, who is that person that's controlling your life and God is so chaotic. So the little girl, the when you talk about the baby girl, mm -hmm. because that's the one who keeps you doing the things that you shouldn't be doing and not walking in this mature place. How did he bring that to you? Um... The journaling. Journaling is That's so true. profound mm -hmm. because it brings out the inner conversation that I wasn't able to get from here. Because I grew up suppressing feelings, mm -hmm. then I never, it's like, it was like a strategy of the enemy to just numb that. So whenever feelings would come up, it would be suppressed. So why? Why were you suppressing feelings? I don't even think it was a, it was a conscious effort. I think it was, my mother used to call me hard-hearted Hannah. Okay. Because I didn't really cry and yes. stuff like that. So yes. she would say, oh, you're hard-hearted Hannah. And because the word was just spoken, I just took on the identity of hard-hearted Hannah. And I don't, she didn't mean no ill intent. Yes. But because that was the word spoken, then when issues would come up and I want to cry about it or talk about it, I say, I'm hard-hearted Hannah. I can't cry. I'm hard-hearted Hannah. I can't cry. And so that's how I built the foundation. So I just started to suppress those emotions because I'm hard hearted Hannah. Yes. And I never cried and never knew how to express emotion until God started to reveal that. But it was through the journaling because I couldn't process it here. It had to come from here, but it could only come from here through the paper. So as you were living out life in marriage, mm. how did what did God Ooh. show you was happening in your marriage as a result of this? Hard-hearted Hannah. You know what's so interesting? Oh, wow. This is deep. I was not able to fully love my husband. And I didn't even know that. So I wasn't even loving me. Wasn't loving my husband. Didn't have the love of the father. Like I could not receive it. Fully receive yes. it. So I'm really just walking it out. And, um, and it's all like mask, if you will. Like I'm just walking it out. Like I don't want to say zombie-like, mm -hmm. but there was no real full emotional connection to it. So my husband's trying to love on me, and I can't fully receive his love. So what does that look like? So he would do what, and you would do what? Um, 
you know, he want to be affectionate. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, oh, okay. Not really engaged in it. Mm-hmm. It just like, oh, okay. And he's like, man, I want to love on my wife, but you just kind of resistant. And it wasn't like I was always like, leave me alone, leave me alone. Right. But you could, you understand the mm-hmm. fullness of like the warm embrace versus yes. like, oh, okay. You know, mm-hmm. and that's how it looked. It was just very um, mediocre. If and God broke that. Yes, I know exactly. Which so he come in and you'd do a half mm-hmm. as as opposed to a full. Mm-hmm. Did he ever say why won't you? Did he ever? Did your husband ever speak to it? Not. I think he would say, "How? Come, what's so bad about me loving my wife, or what's so bad about me uh, admiring my wife's body, or stuff like that?" Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, oh, just no, no, no. You know, just constantly, no, no. Like, not being comfortable with me. Mm-hmm. And so not allowing him to really gain access to his wife. Mm-hmm. And just enjoying me. Instead, I'd be like, mm, you know, really yes. kind of. Kind of, uh, kind of stay here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're doing too much. Right. Like, yeah, you could glance, but just not right. be trying to look and, like, absorb. Right. Because I couldn't. Yeah, so he's trying to love on me. And I'm saying, why don't you love me? Why don't right. you really love me? Right. He is trying to love on me, but I can't receive it because I can't receive the fullness of the love because it's so, it's this barrier. So do you think when you look back, were you trying to, and it's not browbeat, but saying, well, God said, God, like if he didn't agree with something you were doing, were you saying, well, but God said, or were you just going along and and doing whatever Antoine said? And then saying, okay, God, secretly on the side, okay, you're going to have to get them. Like, how were you handling the moments like that? So that's really good because I didn't all, I I didn't really say God said. There were some moments that I had to just say, this is not me. I mean, God literally said, but for the most part, it was me walking it out. Okay. Um, But there were times, like I remember a particular phone call. So my husband calls me and asked me to do something in, in direct conflict with God. And I'm having a conversation with the Lord while this is going on. I'm saying, Lord, you asked me to be a submissive wife. This is definitely going against what you say. I'm never going to disobey you first, but I also want to be a godly woman to communicate this properly. Mm -hmm. Lord, fix it. And so as soon as I said that, Antoine said, oh, let me call you right back. He hung up the phone. I said, Lord, you can't, don't put me in the middle of this. Make it right. So I don't have to choose because I'm always choose you. But I want to be obedient to what you asked me to do about my husband. My husband called me back and the whole conversation was changed that God had done the work and I didn't have to be caught in the middle. And I had seen that time and time again. Even with a, we were outside playing. I mean, he was playing music that I wasn't particularly interested in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, would you turn that music down? And he's like, I want to play my music, blah, 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 blah. And so I walked away and the Lord said, now there was a different way to do that. Mm -hmm. Next time, just ask me. I said, whoa. So guess what? The previous times, I said, Lord, I don't like what's happening. And if you don't like it either, I'm asking you to fix it. <laughs> guess what the Lord did? Fix it. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be in the middle. It's mm-hmm. not about me being right or wrong or proving nobody right. Mm-hmm. Let God do the work. And when you got that relationship, it makes life mm-hmm. so peaceful. And you're absolutely right. Because when I think about, it just made me think about our the book we have, Marriage Done Right is Hard Work but it's worth it. And the done right is always the Lord's way. Mm -hmm. And that's what we struggle with. The spirit and the flesh is always wrestling. And if we give in to the flesh, Mm. then we're going to lose every time. time. We're going to be frustrated and it's not going to work and we're going to want to give up. But when you yield yourself to the Lord in his way, Mm -hmm. then it comes out as just as smooth as butter. It's as sweet as honey. Yes. And it doesn't mean that you still don't have disagreements and you still, you know, get aggravated with one another. But you those times are less. Yes. And you move through them quicker. Yes. And you can find yourselves at peace more than you're at odds. Yes. When you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So what other recommendations? Like what what would you say to wives who Mm -hmm. are um, going through this and not don't yet have that kind of relationship with the Lord? Can't quite hear God like that, um, but know that there's more. Mm-hmm. They want to move to a different place in their relationship with their family, or they see that there's something more that they want to do ambition-wise. Mm-hmm. What would you say to her to help her get to another place? Apart from the Lord, Jesus says in the Bible, apart from me, you could do nothing. Mm-hmm. The very first place and only place to start is in the Word of God. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to uh 
You don't have to know it. You just got to open it up and just say, Lord, here I am. My starting point was 10 minutes. I said, Lord, I'm going to commit to 10 minutes of just being in the word. Mm -hmm. And I had to get up in the morning in order for it to work because I tried in the afternoon, tried at night. None of that worked. Mm -hmm. I'm not a morning person. And I said, Lord, if you want me to spend time with you, you got to wake me up. Mm -hmm. And guess what he did? Every morning on <laughs> clockwork, 6.30 a.m. And I was not happy a lot of times. Yes. And yes, I was like, yes. come on, Lord. Yes. But this is, but when I know he's drawing me there and I'm asking for, I said, okay. But 10 minutes was my starting point. Mm -hmm. And I literally didn't have a plan or anything. I opened up the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, here I am. And I didn't try to read the word to figure it out or write whatever. I just said, I'm going to start. And I just would read. But I would show up every day and just start reading. Yes. And then the Lord started to bring understanding. Through various means, mm -hmm. he started to bring to light what he was communicating to me. So he was doing the work. Yes. I literally just showed up. So all I'm saying is if you want more, only God himself knows what that looks like. We have no idea what our destiny is. Mm -hmm. We may think some things we want to do, but God's ways are always so much greater. Right. So when you ask him for that more, then he knows what it looks like to get you there. And it's like, let your starting point first understand who you are. Mm -hmm. Because apart from that, how you even know what that, who are you? You're not right. what the world says you are. Right, right, you are not. Right. You have been specially created, formulated, and purposed for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And he is such a blessing. Let God show you who he is mm -hmm. and who you are. And I would just say, opening the word and just saying, Lord, here I am. Let him start to do the work. Well, I think that's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go get something. You think the guy's ready? Oh, I think so. Okay. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> So what? So now you guys have this organization. Now that you've made it through all of that and you've come out on the other side that you started, tell us a little bit about it and what's next on your radar. Go ahead, you can start off. <laughs> ah, what's next on the radar? So we're we're in the development stage of uh, We Are Walkers United. Okay. Uh, we are right now, we do a Facebook Live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, through Facebook. Uh, so we are just following God's, God's plan when he has, God has shown us that he wants us to be global. Uh, so we're just asking him and praying that he brings whatever resources we need and the people to help us see the vision mm -hmm. of, of where it's going. Uh, we're working with a friend of ours now who is kind of setting that vision for us. Uh, so we can start taking it back to God and say, okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. Now we need for you to bring forth, you know, the resources to take it to that next stage. Because at the end of the day, it's his ministry. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, has nothing to do with us or has nothing to do with our last name or anything. It is definitely his ministry. So we just, we just call on him for it. Yeah. And so it's interesting because as the Lord was doing the transformer work in our household, mm -hmm. what he was doing was uniting the walkers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when he brought the... I, the title, mm -hmm. We Are Walkers United, mm -hmm. we thought it was about, oh, okay, that's a cool mm -hmm. way. It started off with Walkers United. And so we go around the house, We Are Walkers United, Walkers United. <laughs> and then the Lord took it a step further and brought to my husband mm -hmm. that he wanted him to start this business for We Are Walkers United. And so he's like, oh, okay. Not understanding the scope of what God was really saying. And what We Are Walkers United is, although it has our last name, it's not limited to us by any means yes. because it means us as walking together as the body of believers, walking together as brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. building a community of believers that we can partner with one another to walk with Christ, mm -hmm. to live out the abundant life. Yes. So it's we are walkers united as far as no division in the church, no division in the race, anything. It's the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, walking the journey of life together to support, to love and encourage each other. And so we know God is calling it to be a movement and on a grand scale. But as my husband said, this is a starting point. Okay. And he's given us the platform to start, you know, putting it out there on the Facebook Live. So it's making us comfortable with one another and okay. engaging other people. But there's a huge community of people that want more. Okay. Right. But there's no avenues to get there. And so We Are Walkers United is a good foundation that God is building. Mm -hmm. And we see some really good things coming from that. Um, and so that's yet to come. Uh -huh. So let, let me ask this question. 
because I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm looking at you too. You say, man, we came from this struggle of uh, dominion, right? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be in charge? And can I be the man? Can I be the woman? Can I be the submissive woman? Can I be the support and all that kind of good stuff? And now you have this organization together. Mm. Talk about the dynamics there as you're trying. What? What? No, no, we're good. No, it's good. I'm just smiling. It's good. Yeah, yeah both yeah, of y'all smiling at the same time. It was like one, yeah. two, three smiles. Well, we haven't been together for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so, so talk to me about those dynamics, right? And because who's in charge and how do we work together and, and how do we walk united as we're trying to run this organization together and, and help other folks? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like again, again when God transformed, tried to transform my house over, uh, I am the president of We Are Walkers United. Uh, but she's a vice president, but she's my partner. So even in that, we had to talk to God about how to establish that 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 line, that communication to to work together, and and me not look at it as saying, oh, okay, I'm the boss, you're in charge, you do this. Now she does uh, because she is a you know uh, at home, she can do a little bit more while I'm, I'm working. So what she would do, she would maybe think of an idea or, or talk about how we should do this, bring it to me and we'll talk about it together. And then I take that back to the Lord and say, okay, this is where we think we should go. And then he will bring some type of confirmation through somebody, which can be a couple of days later or a week later and say, oh, maybe you guys should do this. Uh, like the other day she did a, uh, she got on Facebook Live by herself and talked about journaling. Mm -hmm. And the response that she got from women it's, it's possibly it's going to lead to a, a, a journey conference where she's going to teach women how to journal. Because that's what she did when we was being transformed. Right. She was journaling right. and writing everything down. So it's just little things like that and not saying, well, I think you should journal. It's saying, hey, you know, people are bringing stuff to us. Mm -hmm. And one thing we always do is take it back to the Lord to get confirmation. Because we have to be careful that, uh, that we're not allowing things that can affect the, his kingdom to come into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we all got to take it back to him to see where the next steps are. Mm -hmm. So remember, because he's in charge, it's his business, it's his kingdom. So I have to take everything back to him, even though on earth I'm the president, he's the CEO. Yes. So yes. He, yes. He, he, he has all the resources and all the finances that we need to, to move forward. So. And because we learn how to interact with each other on a, personal level mm -hmm. and as a husband and wife and learning that respect then and every like our term is take it back to the Lord so you just hear that from us all the time and mm -hmm. that just simply means pray about it right. go back to the Lord and ask for clarity and confirmation for yourself mm -hmm. and let him mm -hmm. bring that for you um, and so now that's what we that's what we do mm -hmm. so when we have those ideas or um, even disagreements in the business aspect of it we say okay let's just take it back to the Lord and then we just, you know, uh, wait for him to bring forth the answer mm -hmm. and not try to force it. Now, have you figured out who has the strengths of what what areas? Have you worked that out? Uh, I am more the, uh, I don't want to use the word focus, uh, but uh, because I've, I've always been in management, I can see things and say, okay, this is some of the things that we need to do because I've worked around profit and losses and, and ran stores. So I kind of equate some of that into what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. but she's a people person. So she, she brings that, I mean, people, she just talked to somebody and all of a sudden they become best friends and they see her glow and all that. So she's that people person and, and, and bringing that aspect to the business. Mm -hmm. And what we don't know, or we, we pray to the Lord that he bring that right person who do, who, who does know. Mm -hmm. And we allow that to come in and we use their strength mm -hmm. and gifts to, to help move the business forward. Mm -hmm. So what are the things you want to offer to people through your organization? And that's what we're working on now right. because there are so many needs. <laughs> it's like, what, what does that look like for We Are Walkers United? What are the community things? That, and one of the things that did come up the other day is I didn't even know they had like journaling classes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But somebody asked me based on what they saw in the prayer journal and the conversation I had, um, would you be my journaling coach? Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, what? 
So that was something very brand, brand new for me. And she mm -hmm. said, yeah, our class is full. Like every Thursday we meet and so many people come to just learn about journaling. Mm -hmm. But God was also bringing that to light about even journaling and note taking, mm -hmm. taking it another step that when we are in the presence of the Lord at church mm -hmm. and in prayer time, what does that look like mm -hmm. to take it to the next step? How do you want to say, oh, God is really talking to me. Man, this whole mm -hmm. uh, sermon is about me. But then you walk away and you didn't forgot pretty much all but 5% of what that was. All you remember is he was talking to you, but what was he talking to you about? Right. So those are just the types of things that we're considering, but um, we're not really sure what that looks like yet. Mm -hmm. um, we know we want to be bring it into the community and definitely partake and partner with other churches. Mm -hmm. That's our main goal is to partner with other churches to see what their needs are and how we can partner together to build that community because that's what it's about right. outside the church. In the bigger scale. Mm -hmm. Allow me to rephrase that question just a little bit. Your question, babe. Okay. And I'm, I'm rephrasing it based on the response I just heard. Regardless of the needs that other churches may have, are there any particular areas that you feel really um, that that are really acute to you? It's like mm. so a niche. Oh, yeah. okay. That's what. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah, reg regardless of where oh, that I need see. may be, it's like, but I know that you really speaks to, to me. Mm -hmm. And and I would do this regardless of whether I know the need or not. Well. That friend again, he, he came to us. He said, you guys need to do a marriage conference. Okay. Um, we said, okay, well, what does that look like? And he said he'll put the, I guess, the plans together on what it should look like. And, 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 and you know, he'll present to us and we'll take it back to the Lord. But again, he, he brought that to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just want to see what his plans come into play and possibly put on, on, on a marriage conference. Because marriage is, is 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 where it all is where it's, everything is happening, at, mm -hmm. where all the chaos is happening inside of a marriage. Uh, so it wasn't by chance that he brought that to us. So we always look at that and say, okay, Lord, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we, we take it back to him. But if we want to attack something really quick, it's probably going to be marriage. Mm -hmm. And we got asked to be part of a organization that's called Rekindle the Fire that deal with married couples. So it's a, it's a group of married couples who kind of share their perspective on marriage, but coming from different views. Okay. So uh, there's something there. Again, I've learned just in my journey that I don't know everything and I can't mm -hmm. do everything. Mm -hmm. And a part of my growth is always asking God to bring the people in our life who can take us to that next step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So that sounds good. Mm -hmm. what, well, I was just going to say, and the women yes. is a particular area for me because, I mean, the women are the heart of the home. And just as the heart and the body mm -hmm. is the, I mean, that's the life source. Women are the life source of the, of the home. And so with that, um, so they are definitely game changers and a huge factor in the shift. Mm -hmm. And so it's really mm -hmm. important to touch base with the women because I know a lot of women say, like you said, we're spiritually strong mm -hmm. and they want their husbands to do more but then they don't even know how to give him access or position behind him or with him to help move that forward. Mm -hmm. And so I would really like to just teach what I've been, you know, taught mm -hmm. to help move that forward so that they can get the full transformation for themselves. So, so I'm mm -hmm. here, you say, because when you said the women, the first question that came to my mind, even as you were talking, I'm like, well, what about the women? And you say women, it's so vague to me. I, I'll let you know, as I say all the time, I'm a product of the, uh, the public school system. So I don't get things as quickly as other people. So when you, when you were saying the women, I'm like, well, what about the women, right? But what I think I heard you say is you want to teach women how to really partner with their husbands. Mm -hmm. and, and you want to do that through We Are Walkers United. Correct. And that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell you one of, the things that, one of the things that we learned. We learned an acronym when it comes to really setting goals. And I guess we'll share it with you. You may have even heard of it. You ever heard of SMART goals? Mm -hmm. In the yeah, corporate environment. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, what's, let's, let's do it together. What's specific? What? Mm -hmm. Measurable. Measurable. Attainable, there you go. Realistic. Oh, realistic. And, and a specific time, time frame. Time. Yeah, 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 it's been a minute for me. And I, yeah. I would just really encourage you guys to even to as use you that. use that, use even that. with um, We Are Walkers United. Mm -hmm. And but really think about it from the niche that God has called you to, mm -hmm. because that, that's where you're going to thrive. A lot of people will bring a lot of different things mm -hmm. your way. And, yes. and guess what? Because you said, and you're right, a lot of the problems do start in marriage, but everybody has problems. Mm -hmm. Right. But you got to really figure out what is it that. I know that God has called me oh, to do. Good. 
and then and then stay in that lane. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Really stay in that lane, and that's where you'll thrive. Mm-hmm. Because if, we'll tell you one of the things that we're focused on, not marriage is just really existing, but we really want you to thrive mm-hmm. in your marriage and be successful. And as we said earlier, we want you to have some fun, too. Mm-hmm. You know, we want you to have some mm-hmm. fun. We want to have some fire. We want you to really enjoy being around each other. I mean, mm-hmm. th- and, we, and we know that that's our niche. And the other component to that is that we're... Or one. In, Go ahead. Another component to that is the how-tos because mm-hmm. there's plenty of information out mm-hmm. there, but we don't know how to use that information right. and implement it in a way that becomes practical and we see the results in our mm-hmm. relationships. Yes. So that is the area that means the most to us. To us. Mm-hmm. That you walk away with some tools and some understanding of next steps mm-hmm. beyond that information. That's so cool. once you do that part, you'll be soaring you'll because be soaring. we believe right. you are going to do a phenomenal job at whatever it is you set your heart oh, to. Because look you. at you today. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. yes. So right. other than that, babe. I think we've held them captive long enough. What do you think? I think so as well. <laughs> we've enjoyed our time with yes, you. Yes, thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. Yes, well, we have the rest of the day to get some things done and we'll be in touch. Okay, good. sounds All good. Right, thank you. All right, yeah. thank you. Uh, you guys have to go. Well, we spent this afternoon with Antoine and Daniel Walker. I think they are a great couple. They, they've gone through some staying things. They've, they've learned how to battle. They learned how to persevere. They've had some mindset changes. And I think that's one of the things that couples really need to learn how to do. They need to learn how to really battle, stay in there and stay in yes. the fight and get their desired results. Yeah, I think you're right. And the problem is most people think <clears throat> that you should be able to go through your marriage and not battle or they go through the marriage battling and don't know quite how to battle in a way that's healthy. And I think what we learned from them today is not only did they go through it, they battled, but they came out on the other side, stronger, yeah, more did. determined, not only for their marriage, but for a future in an organization and ministry that they've come up with. And I think that's so important because even though when we're in it, we're only seeing ourselves right there at that particular place. But if we truly can trust God through that, yeah. He has so much more that he wants to do, not only in us individually, but with us corporately. Oh, yeah, all that is corporate stuff. Okay, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you one of the things, especially I want to speak to the uh, to the fellas out there. One of the things that Antoine did, which I think is very important, as you can see, he actually came to himself. You know, we from mm-hmm. a biblical perspective, we talk about the prodigal son all the time. But what he did, he actually came to himself because if you think about it, he dealt with anger. He dealt with his proper position as a man. He dealt with mm-hmm. his his manhood, right? right? And he dealt with his also his his fatherhood. I mean, even getting things better with his, uh, his spiritual relationship proper with God and also working with his wife, mm-hmm. that actually opened up the door to make him a better father. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the kind of thing you need to do. You need to come to yourself, be honest with yourself, be honest with, with where you are, mm-hmm. and then make the appropriate changes. And when you do that, as you as we saw with them, you can come out better on the other side. So I just am so thankful that they came with us today. They shared their story, they were open, they were transparent. Yeah, well, let me share some of Danielle's because she also came and gave a lot of good information. She talked about not only being able to find out who she is as an individual, but how she needs to be as a wife. Yes. She came from a background where she was used to being in control. And so she tried to bring that in the marriage and it didn't work. That, and she it never really, does. It doesn't. It never and does. she allowed God to take her through a process to bring her to a place where she could grow as an individual, Mm -hmm. grow as a wife, and still maintain the unity that was necessary for God to help her husband navigate all those areas that she just said. Yeah, the reason you, you see me smiling because, you know, the man, he always wants his wife, right? But when you, she makes those kind of changes, now he wants to be around it too. Oh, <laughs> and isn't that necessary? That's very necessary. Especially for longevity. Absolutely. Because we know that marriage done right. That's hard work. But it's, it's worth, it. worth it. And we thank you for tuning in this time and we will see you again next time on Family Futures Today where we prepare today so that we can thrive tomorrow. See you next time. Peace.